So I, 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 I used to be, used to be friends with Dave Grohl. You guys know who Dave Grohl is, right? I'll take that as a yes. Go in there. Damn it. I knew Dave when he was in, a long time ago, when he was in a band called Scream. But I knew Scream, the band Scream, before that. In the early 80s, they put out a record on Discord that I still think is the best record that Discord ever put out. And uh, I was a big fan of that record. I saw them play a few times with the original lineup. And then uh, the uh, original drummer went on tour. So the story goes from Dave, my, my old friend Dave. Um, remember, this is, how I, this is all leading up to me blowing it big time. Okay. Um, I heard that they got back from the tour, and his two-year-old kid didn't have any idea who he was, the drummer. Just <laughs> He's like, my kid doesn't even know who I am. I can't go on tour anymore. So he quit. Enter Dave. Dave's a penniless, you know, it's rags to riches story for sure. Came without warning. The mean streets of D.C. As you, as I, as I anyway, Dave was a young kid, you know, playing drums, a real good drummer. And uh, so that's so then the Melvins played with, with Scream a number of times after that. And uh, that's when we met Dave. So I was friends with Dave for a long time before... Let's just say before he could buy cars with a credit card. You know? <laughs> I knew Dave B.C. <laughs> before credit and before Cobain. How about that? <laughs> so, um, anyway, Dave becomes this big superstar later up here, playing the QE Arena and, and other non-venues, you know? <laughs> I don't consider anywhere built for a sporting event to be a venue to see music. I don't know if you guys do, but if I go to a hockey arena, I want to see hockey. Yes. I don't want to see a band play. I don't know. That's what I liked about punk rock to begin with. I liked the intimacy of the whole thing. That's what attracted me to it. You really don't get that in a place that's designed for basketball. <laughs> I mean, to me, I mean, if you're 16 and you're on acid or something, it's fun to just be away from your parents for a long period of time. So it has its place. I understand that. It's not that I don't get it, you know. But as time has went on, you know, and I... Relatively quickly, when I was a young kid, I realized that I wanted to go to places like this or a, cl a regular club and see the bands right in the eyes. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I liked, anyway. So Dave's playing venues that you can barely see him with a deer rifle, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's him. <laughs> Could be a roadie, you know. <laughs> and I, I, it reminds me quickly, I saw the Rolling Stones in the early 80s. Bummer. In a non-venue. I was been with this guy. You don't early like the Beatles either. Or right? the early no. 80s. How can you not like I don't like one single song the Stones ever did. You don't like them. I didn't not say, one song. I didn't say that. You said you didn't like them. Oh <laughs> You're really gonna argue with this man. <laughs> well, I like the Stones. I don't know about you guys. I'm up to about the mid 70s. I really like I love the Stones. I love their Anyway, so I go to this non-venue to see the Stones, and it would literally be halfway through a song before I'd go. Oh, it's satisfaction. <laughs> uh, it literally amplified motocross in a place like that. You know? It's like, uh, you know, it's just not, it's not for me. It's not for me. Anyway, Dave's playing places that sound like amplified motocross, you know, and uh, we're playing, you know, we're down here, Dave's up here. So I lost track of Dave, you know, believe it or not. Okay, so Dave doesn't have time. And when you get that big, phones quit working both ways. Do you guys know that? <laughs> they no longer work back and forth. So anyway, I, I've lost track of Dave for a decade, uh, well over a decade, you know. Um, all of a sudden I see in the LA paper, which is where I live, the original Scream's gonna play a show in LA. Like, wow, I'm gonna go, that'll be great. The original lineup, that'll be, that'll be really fun. I can't wait to go, you know. So I go to the show, it's in a venue, not a non-venue, okay, which is exciting enough as it is. Who's at the show but Dave? My old buddy Dave. <laughs> Dave, Dave's really happy, acts like he's really happy to see me. How's it going? Give me your number, blah, blah, blah. Changing numbers back and forth, me and Dave. Okay, Dave, show's great, by the way, you know? Anyway. Um, so, a week or so later, I text Dave. Nothing. Text him again. Nothing. Put the, put the phone away and quit texting Dave after that. Okay, Dave doesn't text me back, so. All right, I get, I get the picture. No worries, you know, so. Uh, nothing new. Nothing's changed. Okay, fine. Whatever. So, a while goes by, all of a sudden, I'm in my kitchen with my wife, and the phone rings. It's it's Dave. Dave's calling me on my phone. I can see it because it's still, it's still in my phone. It tells me, you know. <laughs> Dave calling, you know. So, 
I better answer it. Answer it. Hello. You know? Hey, it's, it's Dave. <laughs> I act surprised. You know? um, he goes, uh, listen, I'm in this other band called Them Crooked Vultures. I was vaguely aware of that, you know, not super aware of it. I mean, I hadn't heard any of it, but um, I knew he was in a band with a guy from Led Zeppelin and somebody else, and I don't know. And uh, um, um, uh, he goes, listen, we're playing a big show in L.A. at some venue, venue or non-venue, I'm not sure which. And uh, he goes, I want you to come down and be my special guest. Remember, this is how I blow it. I blew it. Okay. <laughs> I want you to come down and be my VIP guest. Backstage, you can come backstage and meet John Paul Jones, a guy from Led Zeppelin. I'm imagining, wow, I could be doing blow with him. I could, you know, who knows what? Maybe we could end up in Mexico. Lord only knows. You know. um, that guy's got deep pockets. He, we could do whatever we wanted. You know, anyway. uh, uh, come on down, it'll be great. And here's where I blow it. My wife's listening to the whole conversation, you know, and, uh, and by the way, at the end of this, at the end of the conversation when I had, she said, you're the only person in the world that would have done that. <sighs> okay, bear that in mind. Okay. That's what she told me after I hung up with Dave. I go, Dave, what, what day's that show? He tells me the date, and I go, oh, man, I got Dodger tickets that night. <laughs> <laughs> Dodger. And they weren't even good tickets. <laughs> and then I said, if something happens, I'd be more than happy to have you come with me to the game. <laughs> <laughs> and he never called me again. <laughs> and then my wife said, you're the only person. <laughs> anyway, I told you it was a relatively pointless story. You like it? Yeah.